You want to breathe first? I'm <laughs> okay. Breath. You know, I, I'm just glad to be here. <laughs> um, traffic was heavy enough. I thought there was an accident in front of me, and there wasn't. And then, um, no, so it's it's just unusually heavy traffic, almost to the point of thinking there was a game in Corvallis tonight. <laughs> so, I don't know. It was bad. And I think it's just, it's getting worse than it used to be, but I'm used to it being bad going through Lebanon, not all the way here. So, anyway, so... Um, Let's call this meeting to order and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. So, um, I think we could probably dispense with going around the uh, room. How many people do we have up there? Is there anybody joined us? No, Woohoo! All right, except Brock. We need Brock. We need Brock. <laughs> so, um, we has everybody had an opportunity to look at the minutes from the last meeting? They look good to me. Okay, and so. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Yeah. And um, I think we can. I'm looking at roll call again. I'm thinking, oh, man. Um, but I think um, Blair can see who's here. Minutes, roll call. Um, can we health committee? Fair people, how's that going? Oh, and we're glad you're back. Yeah. We are so glad to see you. So I never left. No. <laughs> um, well, I think there's luck. Yeah. Woohoo! I don't have much of a report. Um, Bob and I walked around to LBCC campus. Possibility of holding the fair outside rather than inside. Um, the outside total dimensions was just about the same as inside. Cooler, obviously, this time of year. I reminded him that in August it might be warmer. Um, but the, uh, the area is covered by the overhang of the building. Uh, and I've been to events in the uh, Albany uh, LBC campus, and that's where everyone goes when they do the, um, when their vendors there. So I could see doing the same thing. And it just, it's cool enough, it's really tolerable. Um, so I think, well, actually, I know there's enough room for the total number of vendors. In fact. Um, the issue would be that outside will be a little harder to manage with tables and chairs. So we're going to need some extra help setting things up. And it's a ways away, but we probably should start worrying about that. We also noticed, much to my surprise, that there's really almost no um, electric outlet on the outside of that building. Um, Bob was going to talk to the LBC. I don't know if the office is open on Saturday or not. I honestly don't know. We were going to check that, but there might be a way to allow the door or something to be open if you want to. Um, and the reason I'm worried about that is that uh, over the last two years, the OHP folks, uh, there's a requirement of annually signing up for OHP, and that was dropped because of the pandemic. People have just been allowed to stay without any new determination. Um, and the thought is that the pandemic is not over, not being over, at least is subsided, and people are going to be asked to be determined. 
And in the last few years, many of them will have moved. Uh, many of them will have changed jobs, changed financial situations, and the state is guessing somewhere in the millions of people will be asked to redetermine the cost about a year's worth of time. So somewhere about 30,000 people a month average. Um, so I was thinking it might be nice to have, because we've done this before in the early days, um, allowed people to uh, register, pre-register, ask questions about uh, signing up for OHP, and you should get the CSC and um, you know, various clinics and case managers and navigators to help do that. And though they could probably do it off of a laptop, you always want to have at least some electricity in case you run out of gas. Um, so we'll play a little bit with that. But, uh, I think it'll be okay. Most of the vendors uh, have actually all of the uh, vendors that have replied have said okay. And I know within the county, uh, various events, though some have been uh, canceled, but it wasn't really because of the pandemic. Uh, so many entities lost staff that they, just, they can't staff on something on a weekend or during the weekend. By August, maybe they will, and I get some of those disclaimers. Uh, we're still on just about the same as before, and we're going to aim for outside. Questions? Questions? Any? Okay. Brock, do you have any questions? I sure don't. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Western University, anything yeah. more? I have a little bit of report, but before I do, I, I want to give Beatrice a chance to start. Oh. Sorry. I want to give Beatrice a chance. I, I, do you know anything about the blood drive that's happening at the high school? Uh, running it, but other than that, not really anything. Do you know the time and date? It's May 10th, and it'll run from, I believe, 9 to 2. Does that sound right? Okay. And I know the Rotary Club has signed up a number of people to participate in it, and I would just open it up to anyone that, that can. I know that there is real need right now blood throughout the world. Thank you, Beatrice. Uh, Western University is having a mentoring recognition program at the high school grandstands on May the 20th, from 12 o'clock until probably about one o'clock. And this will be the first time that the mentors have actually got to physically be with their mentees. Uh, because of COVID, uh, Western University has not allowed face-to-face -face contact between the mentors and the mentees. So this will be the first time they actually get to see each other in person, which is pretty exciting, number one. Uh, number two, their program is over this year. And so they, if the year has gone by fast. I guess the, uh, the Western University students are near graduation for, you know, moving on to the next phase of their their program. The first years will be moving to second, second years to third, and so on and so forth. So at any rate, I cannot be there that day, May the 20th. I'm out of town, but if anybody from the health committee would like to be there on the 20th, I'd be more than, if you let me know, I'll pass, pass your name on to the lady that's in charge of the program and uh, let them know that, that at least one of them might be there. So, but, it's at noon and they're going to have pizza. So 
you're welcome to participate in, participate in eating pizza as well. So I know that they would love to have you and uh, it'd be good. Poster contest uh, that I talked about probably a month ago uh, has concluded. They picked their winners. Uh, first place was Andrea Gordon, and there was a tie for second place. That was Mercedes Burks and Carson Perry. And then there were three other students that did participate in the program, and their posters are not up yet. They will be, but the other three are out in the main hall, and you might want to take a look at them. They're very colorful and very, uh, very informative, very creative. So, uh, I think first place ended up getting uh, some kind of a, a game thing. I don't know what it's called. program. Uh, the topics that were covered by uh, the mentoring, the mentors over the time period this year were mental health, especially stress, uh, addiction. Uh, I don't know what the units actually covered, but that's what they worked on. Uh, COVID-19, the topic that they hit, body image was important to the kids. That uh, brain trauma, nutrition, and chronic diseases. The topic the mentors worked with the mentees on. So, pretty good topics, pretty heavy topics. It's probably all I have at this point. Uh, they are looking forward to doing the program again next year. Um, there's been a request that more. Of course, they've not been able to meet face to face, but more face to face, uh, more um, health, occupational people coming in and talking and working with the kids, and actually some visits to Western University, the men, chief mentors taking the mentees to the Western <coughs> University, showing them around. So I felt like those were all the topics. Very exciting. That's it for Western University. Any questions? You had one about the blood drive, maybe? Yeah, I was going to ask if uh, the uh, have we been putting that out on social media? And if we haven't for the blood drive, if you remind me tomorrow, we can probably do it through Trish uh, at uh, Trisha at the Rotary. I would say if Trisha that, has so. taken on yeah. she and Liz are maybe working together on it. And so so I bet if we remind ourselves tomorrow, we could make that happen. Between the two of us, we might be able to <laughs> <Maybe>. do that. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe we need to bring Dick to yeah, the probably. I recommend bringing Lajia in on that, yeah, too. Yeah, that's, that's a good yeah, idea. Legia, okay. good. And that's good. a good point. That would be. And the idea that you can sign up online, make your appointment, yeah. which is something I hadn't done before. I've had people call the house and say, well, would you like an appointment? But it was nice to be able to do that. Pretty simple. Yeah. So, any other questions? Okay. So that brings us to um, the Homeless Action Committee. Brock, did I'm you? I'm going to turn it over to Brock. <laughs> Brock, do you have something to share with us on that? Um, I don't think I have anything to share. I mean, I'll. I'll um, do a brief update this evening on uh, the status of kind of where we're at. And then I think there was some questions regarding that subboard that I was going to kind of highlight the process and what the next steps are for that as well. If that's all right. That'd be great. Okay. Um, I hope everybody can hear me. I'm getting a little bit of static or something, but. Um, yeah, so are we. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> I can but it's clear you. now. Um, so regarding the site, um, things are progressing. The site is um, a little bit beyond what I call rough cleared. Um, they've knocked everything down. Everything's pretty smooth. 
it's been a little tough with the weather. It's pretty mucky and messy out there. Um, those guys have been doing a great job. Um, kind of where we're at right now is um, the basic clearing's been done. Uh, we've got committed about 15 um, donated, 15 um, dump trucks of gravel. Um, I'm holding off on that until we're truly ready for it. So the city um, has done a lot of work on their fence and getting that roadway somewhat set. Um, it's, it's at least uh, leveled, but they're going to do more leveling uh, or grading, I should say, for the roadway. And so they're going to start that work probably this week as well as um, next week. Um, Pacific Power was contacted uh, a bit ago, and they're still scheduling. Um, they mentioned it, it looked like about a two-week lag. Um, we are a little concerned of materials. The interesting thing in both with um, – uh, the the conduit and the plumbing like materials, as well as the huts that the kids are working on, there are some shortages of materials. Um, I'm not sure what the the reasons are, but um, so we are facing a few delays here and there. But Pacific Power's on task. Um, we're they're going to evaluate it and give us the sizing, and the guys will go to work. Uh, laying down the ditch and putting in the, uh, what's needed to put in the power and water on the north side. And then we're working, we're working through the sewer side uh, to the south. Uh, we discussed plans regarding that uh, last week as well. Uh, and then a lot of the material that's in the, um, oh, the um, maintenance area, will be moved and used as fill in addition to the fill we're getting. So uh, um, the guys are doing an incredible job. Uh, the site's looking great. Um, they're they're amazing with the equipment. Uh, on the high school side, we have- Brock, yeah. I have a question before you leave, if I can, before you leave sure. the power, if I could cut yeah. in just for a minute. You and I had talked early on about the possibility of maybe getting uh, some kind of solar. You said that you had a gentleman that you knew yeah. that worked solar. And, and my thought would be if there's any way of getting maybe a, a small solar panel for each hut, there would at least be some minimal electricity available to the huts. Did Have yeah, you done me, any investigating on that? I will definitely that? check into that. Um, I also have to look into code. Because the minute you start applying power and water and things like that, they start to fall under a little bit different guys. But um, I am contacting him. He is one of the he his region is actually the entire northwest region. Um, I his kids and my kids went to school, and I did some work on some programming of solar. Um, some software and such. So I'll reach out to him. Um, he's out of Paloma and find out if they're still in the business and what they're doing with that. He tended to do very large commercial projects. So he would be doing the giant solar farms you see. But what a great, um, I, I think that's a brilliant idea and, and definitely needs to be followed up. If anything, you know, the, the, everyone can use their phone charged and, and we can run quite a bit of stuff off of this the solar aspect well and even if we can get the office building itself basically powered we wouldn't be worrying about electricity costs yeah exactly exactly so i will definitely look into that you might uh, be able to get a grant a green grant to turn yes. that building into um into solar like that mm -hmm. and then the whole yeah. project wind it all up into one project for the grant yeah, because there's no I don't think that building has LED lights or anything in it and it no. could the overall cost could go down substantially yeah and Great. we may want to upgrade regardless I think I you know to your point we want we won't go I don't think we'll go quite as far as being a Leeds building but it needs to be um you know we want to be a showcase yes Sorry to interrupt you. No, 
I think that's great. Any um, uh, regarding the site, any questions? Okay. Now, um, other than that, I also, Brock, um, when yeah. you're looking at grants, look for rural community grants. Yes. Okay. And we met with that group uh, last Friday. So okay. um, we had a big conversation with them, and they have a meeting in Redmond here. Uh, pretty quick. Uh, they gave us some, I'm looking at the documents they gave us, but they have some stuff coming up as well. And we are, we had a good conversation with them, um, had them tour the site and so on. Great. Okay. Um, the second part is the huts themselves. And so the high schoolers are crunching through them. We've had a little bit of some supply issues. Um, but it looks like, for the most part, um, we're getting um, the last two coverings that go over the top. So it's like a boiled bubble wrap, and I'm ordering that, I think, tonight. And the last piece is that, oh, it's like a mylar, or, or it's, it's the, outs, the outside, outside piece. That one has been really difficult to get a hold of. And so um, Ken is hunting that down as we speak. Um, Knight River just completed a very large major um, building um, that has that for the entire roof. So we're trying to work through that contractor because I'm sure their scraps are probably larger than our huts. And we're just going to try to work through that and other means. Um, but there is a substantial shortage of that, along with, believe it or not, insulation is a shortage. Um, but we were able to secure all that. Ken um, basically had prioritization because the builders typically have prioritization, so he was able to secure that for us. Um, we're doing some um, things like our locks are kind of unique in that um, we're working with Albany Locksmith and there are, you know, uh, multiple keys and we'll have master keys so that we can always rekey them ourselves and not always rely on a locksmith. And if people lose them, we can rekey and we'll always have access to the huts through a master key. So we've been working through some of that logistics and um, the team just keeps kind of working it through and um, they're gonna be launching the rest of them and they believe they'll be able to easily get them all done before the end of the term. Wow, that's they, amazing. There's only a month of school left. So yeah, I figured yeah, if they could they get, get another going, seven or eight done, I'd be happy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see, that's that side. Um, oh, any questions uh, for the huts or the site? Um, you know, we're just working as soon as possible. I don't have a complete schedule, but um, we pretty much purchased all the materials, all the windows, all the doors, the locks, um, basically all the materials except that outer, outer covering. So um, things are looking pretty good there. Good. Um, when you start moving things in, where is the washer and dryer and that kind of stuff going to be? Is that going to be in the old annex building or do you have a, a building you bring it in for that? Yeah, so um, things like, okay, the shower trailer is at our engineering firm being worked on. Um, the idea behind that was to get the dividers for each of the stalls and then ADA compliance. We may hesitate a little bit on the ADA compliance because you know, the, the solution they're looking at is pretty expensive and we may just simply do a ramp for now because um, we th there isn't an immediate requirement, but we really do need to be have that all set up and going. Um, the bathrooms will be doing the porta potties. We'll also be getting uh, hand washing stations as well for outside. And then for laundry facilities, for internal laundry, um, I wish I knew the organization. We have been getting donations of handmade quilts. So every hut, our plan is to have a handmade quilt for every single hut. Um, I still need to order the beds. Um, so it's a prison supply house that supplies for jails and 
prison and we'll be ordering the beds and um, the actual laundry piece will be in the annex but that will be primarily for what we call internal laundry um, for external we would like to work with the, the local group um, the, the local laundry there and provide um, tokens or work with them to get habits so we have our clients but also when we visited the Walla Walla site they did have access to a portable um, laundry hand crank laundry type dynamic um, we'll take a look I actually um, again I have a link with um, the uh, laundromat I can't remember what they're called out of Corvallis uh, good friends with them and I'm going to see what I can do to um, acquire some commercial level um, type uh, washer and dryers um, if Colin Berger then that when we were getting the um, high-end Maytag and a commercial washer and dryer for Blue River and Estacada that worked with us and I would highly recommend um, checking in with them. Great. I, I will absolutely they do are that. Absolutely. Yeah, their customer service is second to none. Um, and the other thing is that with your beds, you might check in with the Lutheran Church. They used to run that um, warming shelter out of there. And they have these black fold up heavy foam um, beds that they may not need anymore now since we don't need a warming shelter anymore. And they had a room full of them, and they're high-end. Very nice. I think that's a brilliant idea, yeah. Because the beds are quilts, and yeah. Because they were supplying them for the warming shelter. Nice. Okay. We'll definitely check into that. Is there yeah. a contact person for that that you know of? Bob Dalton. Bob Dalton. <laughs> oh, amazing. Okay. So Bob Dalton. Bob Dalton. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. Thank yeah, you. Talk. Thank you so much. That that is very helpful. Um, OK, switching gears over to the committee. So I haven't really engaged that yet. I'm really focused on getting the site, getting it prepped, getting it ready. But I did talk with Shirley and, and a few of the board members. And so here's kind of the plan as um, we're getting some help on our website and we're going to get a link and the board members typically I have either a volunteer form um, but there is specifically I have in our documentation specifically a what I call board member form it's an application form and what we're going to do is put it on the site and put it out there the original premise um, uh, goals that we had is we wanted um, representation from lived experience and we definitely have some candidates that are interested, but like I mentioned, I'll have everybody fill out an application. Um, we have a commitment from the police department. Um, we're, you know, uh, there's some linkages to business owners, the counselors, um, and really what I wanna do is open it up to really the city of Sweet Home because what we want are, are real advocates of this project of this project and um, the, you know, supporters and people that are, you know, really wanting to see this through, participate and figure out what's, what's best for both the community as well as the, um, uh, the resource center itself. And so we'll have that out there. I'm thinking what I'll do is put a deadline of, let's say the end of June unless we finish the hut sooner. If we finish the hut sooner, we'll, we'll um, move up the cutoff time. But the idea was, you know, as the huts get finished and get placed, and as we get things up and in place, then um, we'll go ahead and either, we'll move that deadline around. But we would like to give the community lots of opportunity to apply for those seven positions and then what i'll do is it's like a job interview essentially um we're gonna take those um positions um and we'll have the fac board then review those 
and make recommendations for who we believe should be on that committee. So are you going to have a balance that are? Uh, I'm sorry, you kind of cut out there just a little. Or did you ask we're going to have a ballot? Ballot of folks. See, there's lovely. <laughs> Who upgraded these things? So <laughs> I was awesome. <laughs> I was under the impression that maybe that because we hadn't had problems till the last city council meeting that I know of. Anyway, so um, you're proposing that these positions all be filled um, at the discretion of FAC. Correct. Okay. And so. Um, and the reason for that is ultimately the the real board of FAC. We are fiscally and um, uh, liably uh, responsible for the site and things like that. So ultimately, they will, you know, have to, um, you know, they they want people one they can work with two. Um, we want folks that are advocates of the site, um, things like that. And then I'll, I'll clarify the job roles. As I was telling um, Dr. Horton, um, I used to do a little bit of um, uh, classes on boards for the um, Center for Nonprofit in Philomath. And, but all my documentation has to do with um, nonprofit real boards, not the sub board. So I'm going to have to kind of finagle jobs and responsibilities because while they have certain responsibilities, they don't have, in a sense, direct fiscal. Um, they can certainly make recommendations um, and, and they'll work closely with Dr. Horton, who's our board member, who will have a direct linkage with this group as well. And so, you know, when it comes to spending or decisions, um, ultimately, it'll have to be the FAC board that will approve or disapprove or, um, you know, kind of their necks on the line. Yes, I understand that. I understand the um, importance of the FAC um, board and their role. I'm just kind of confused about mm -hmm. the value of the community committee within this role. And um, how it's been presented all um, as we've had these conversations. Um, I'd like to see what you're proposing okay. um, and that language because um, I'd like to know what the um, what that is, what FAC is proposing that that would look like. Mm -hmm. As far okay. as um, uh, the value of the community um, committee and oh, okay. um, yeah. their role and um, what they're the why we are having this and sure. um, I'm not I understand the um, value of FAC's board right but if you're um, looking at community support and engagement yeah. and advocates um, I think that there's real potential um, for a sustained um, positive engagement with the community through these individuals yes. and um, so we were working on language of what that would look like and I kind of anticipated something coming um, to us tonight and so um, and ultimately to the city council okay. and so that's that yeah. and, and it would be really good to have this in place before any applicants applied because we need to know what the goals, their mission statement, what that might look like for them to work within. And um, I remember um, you saying that um, you thought that they would go within that and find, um, define themselves, but at the same time, I think there needs to be a structure in place and um, that all community partners involved in this would have a, um, a role in determining that agree yeah and and the intent here is fac is is responsible for um outreach in lynn county we also have responsibility for harm reduction for lynn county we ended up getting a grant to represent that piece um, we have a mobile outreach arm 
and I'm trying to think of what else we do, but there, there's one other thing. And what this committee, the real emphasis has to do with one, the true representation of the, the you know, linkages with that community, how important that is and are things going well and, and are things going as expected. So I, I would concur with you and I'll get those details for you. Thank you. Um, and if you want to, um, yeah, let's just let's do that. Um, the sooner the better. And then um, we can get it out to all the um, community health committee so we can look at it. And I, there's a lot of expertise in this room and um, with what works well and what does not work well, although it may have great intentions um, to be able to develop that structure we need. So I really appreciate that. Anybody else? So I with agree. that, and okay. also we are going to a national conference next week, and um, it's uh, it's got so many facets of what we're doing and what we're trying to do, as well as um, programs and components of um, the type of shelter we're providing. So we'll be getting even additional information from from that conference um, from next week as well. But I will get that information to you. And Brock, we've had, and I'm sure you may be aware of this, um, different people um, attached to this. We've had some conversation about making sure that we document this process really well as far as pictures of, of the huts being constructed, the site being cleared, um, and developing a, um, a way to tell our story to other communities so that they could replicate this. And I believe that that is actually in FAC's best interest and Sweet Homes. And so um, as you go through this process, please remember to take pictures, okay? Yes, we have taken, um, oh boy, I've probably taken 500 pictures just in the last awesome. few weeks. Um, and we're doing video and, um, uh, Boy, who was I talking with about um, there's an individual in Sweet Home that may um, be able to help us assemble a really good video. And Brian I'm bringing Hutchins. the drone out next week to also do a drone flyby and get some video from that as well. Excellent. I, I know the school district has somebody. I don't know. Is that the same person? Mm -mm. It's uh, the Disney, Disney person. Okay. Yes. There, There is a person at the high school that actually does documentaries. Nice. And he has done the documentaries for the forestry program and and put out some excellent, excellent programs. So he might also be one that we may want to talk to. I know he could definitely do the, the work that's going on at the high school right now. He could do that. And I know the city man, the pro tem city manager is also asking for that and has contacted uh, Will Coltrane at the high school to see if maybe he could get that person on board to do something along a video type uh, with the huts. So that, yes. that might be a natural it's way a to start. go. Much, yeah, not bringing in more people, but focusing on the people we have available. Yeah, and yeah. that'd be awesome. Well, there'd be no cost. That would even be better, I guess. So, <laughs> that's well, and I think it's extremely the important. I've been working with Blair and need to work closer with Christy on the story because I agree together I mean the city has a remarkable story but you know we as the nonprofit have a remarkable story but they need to definitely we need to be in lockstep and it it is something that I don't believe any other community has done um, you know people have put huts up and people have done things but they haven't had the working arrangements that we have and, you know, my other big recommendation is I started doing a little research into some of the other communities. They do not have a health committee like this one. And it is a very important aspect And this. None of this would have happened without this committee. So it's 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 an interesting model that I think other communities can def definitely benefit from. I agree. Absolutely. Um, oh, one sad note, and we'll see. I, I have happens. something to add when you get done. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> One sad note is um, I have not heard we may have lost that hundred thousand dollar grant um, because of timing and issues. But I am um, arranging or trying to arrange another meeting with the individual, and um, he's been pretty busy so far. But I'm tapping on other resources to tap on them and see what we can do to hopefully resurrect that. So I was actually talking to Kate this weekend and um, she indicated there's a lot more resources out there than what were um, prior to this legislative session. And um, I'm sure you've been tracking that as well. Um, for the most part, I am um, reaching back out to the um, procurement officers for the 110 stuff. And um, Shirley is actually part of a state action committee for the mental health grant, um, mental health housing, which is another $148 million. And she's on the committee that decides the criteria and, and sets that up. And, you know, we were a little concerned if we we're on the committee that's um, setting that grant up, can we also Conflict apply? of interest. <laughs> <laughs> but they are gonna allow us to apply as well, so. Um, where there's a lot of excitement, you know, underfoot there. And um, and then we're also looking into the, the federal side as well. Okay. Okay. You were going to say something? Yeah, I, I'm not even for sure where I got this from, but uh, Portland State University has just completed a two-year study on homeless villages and their results were pretty amazing. Uh, people that had originally been adamantly opposed to it, the neighbors in the neighborhoods were adamantly opposed to putting these villages in their neighborhoods. And after questioning, I think it was 2,000, yeah, 2,000 community members in this survey that they conducted, overwhelmingly people were in support of these small pods. And when I say small, what they found was the ones that were the most successful had 20 to 30 clients using them. Pretty close to the size that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was actually uh, a news report by Kendra Kent, and I think she's with Channel 2, I'm not for sure, no, KPTV in Portland. Okay. And she actually did the report as a news uh, as a news item, but it was pretty interesting to read through the results. But overwhelmingly, the people that were using the facilities, the clients, seventy to ninety percent of them felt that it was a very positive place for them to be, and they mm -hmm. greatly appreciated it. And yeah. the same percentage of people outside in the neighborhoods we're supporting. So I, I think that says a lot. And it's something that uh, it's the first study that's been done on these pods as far as anybody can be. Great. Yeah. So I'll look that up. That was what I had heard from a friend who lives in Portland. There was a lot of pushback for the one that was going near her home. Everybody's all upset. They didn't want it in their neighborhood. Not that not in my backyard type attitude. Right. And then once it was in place, they haven't had people roaming the streets in their neighborhood, and and the things that they were everything they were worried about, it it's been fine. Yeah, it's been ex excellent. The article stated that that they actually have neighbors that will come talk to other neighborhoods about what experience they've gone through. your mic's off. <laughs> I'm doing that on purpose, you know. So, <laughs> I'm working on my lip reading because I am deaf oh. in one ear. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I guess I just assumed that you could hear me. It was the, the background noise here that's kind of crazy. Yeah. Um, so let's go around the room and make sure we've got all of the everything out on the table so far. Everything's okay. on the table. I appreciate Brock things that you're doing. I appreciate what the kids are doing at the high school with the blood drive. 
I appreciate what both you and Bob are doing. So, Dick, keep doing what you're doing. That's a lot of work, I know, but it's something that our community can be proud of. Beatrice, thank you for being here. Blair, thank you for the help you've given the FAC. And Chief, I thank you for everything you do all every day. Yeah. Beatrice? Glad to have you. It is good to have you. Absolutely. Chief? Nothing for me. <laughs> Brock, did you have anything else you want to discuss? Oh, I'm sure I talked way too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, you stretch this meeting into almost 45 minutes. <laughs> we get out of here by seven. That's great. <laughs> I got a, a quick question. I'd heard somebody, I think it may have been as I was leaving the last meeting, something about self-esteem training for people who are homeless. Do, does anybody know anything about that? No. Okay, I will continue to um, go back. Next time I'm going to grab somebody and ask them what they're talking about. Okay, because I, I actually think that that is something that um, I would like to attend to see how it would affect our students who are homeless to get that kind of training. So, um, and with that, and seeing no other business before us, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. We have a motion to adjourn. Um, it is non-debatable. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Good night. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you.